Praise God, Church. Um, I welcome you to this wonderful service. And uh, today, I'd like to ask all of you to pray that you'll have a wonderful spirit to receive the word and to have a prayerful and a praising spirit with us. And uh, as we start, I'd like to kick off with an opening prayer. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this wonderful day, giving you all the glory and all the honor, mighty Lord Jesus. Thank you for this wonderful service that you've given unto us. And as people are at home, O oh Father Lord, viewing us from at home, O oh mighty Lord Father, I pray, O oh Father Lord, that you'll give them the spirit, O oh Father Lord, to praise and glorify a holy name, O oh Father Lord, and to have an open heart, O oh Father Lord, to listen to your word, O oh mighty Lord Father. And even as we are at home, O oh Father Lord, I know that the spirit to praise and worship your holy name is hum somehow low, O oh Father Lord, but Lord, I pray that, Lord, you'll stir up that spirit in us, O oh Father Lord, and give us that zeal to come to you in glory, O oh Father Lord, in honor, mighty Lord Jesus. We thank you and do bless the whole service, and as we bow down before you and worship you in this glorious day of the Lord. Be with us and guide us in everything. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Welcome back again to this wonderful service. I'd like to have to tell you the praise, the call to worship for today, which comes from the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 1. The theme is the how of prayer. So let's go to Luke, chapter 11, verse 1, and it says, now Jesus was praying in, the, in a certain place, and when he finished, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And John taught his disciples. Thank you. Right now, I'd like to welcome the praise and worship. Sing your 
King in Jesus' name. We worship you, Redeemer. We exalt you, your honor and magnify you in the name of Father. Decreeing and declaring, dear King, that there's no other God and there's no other King apart from you, ancient of this. You are faithful, Father. You are mighty. You are glorious. And there's no one else apart from you, O Lord. We appreciate King of Glory for, the, for you gathering us at this juncture, Lord. It's not a normality, Father, but indeed it's a great favor from you, Eshadai. We worship you, we exalt you, we honor and magnify your holy name, O King of Kings. This is another great day you have, you have given us. This is another great hour you have given us, Lord, to bask in thy presence, Eshadai. And then, Lord, we say you are worthy and there is no one else apart from you, King of Kings. Lord, you've been, dear Lord, in very many activities and you've kept us here, Father. You've sinned against you, Lord, when knowing and not knowing, Lord, when wanting and not wanting, King of Kings. But you are a merciful and a faithful God. Have mercy, Lord, and forgive us, dear King of Kings. For your want to us, Lord, that your mercies are renewed every and every morning, King of Kings. And it's because of the mercies and the grace that you are still alive. And we appreciate and ask you, Redeemer God, have mercy and forgive us, King of Kings. You are faithful, Jesus. You are mighty God. You are an awesome, O God, and you are incomparable, King of Kings. There's no one else apart from you. You are Yahweh, and there's none else apart from you. We worship you, exalt you for the faith taken us, O Lord. We worship and exalt you, dear Lord, for this for you have taken us, Lord, I mean, it's this great challenge, dear Lord. And my Father, because you have faith and we trust in you, Lord, we know and have faith, dear Lord, that you see us through. For in the book of dear Lord, you are in the book of Psalms 120, you want to us in the book of Psalms 120, Father, you want us, dear Lord, that those who trust in you, King of Kings, are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but they do rest forever. And indeed, oh Lord, in you we trust, Father, no matter what the challenges come, you will never be shaken, King of Kings, for we trust unto you, we trust unto you, everlasting God, we trust unto you, mighty God. We surrender even our daily lives before our daily lives before you, Lord. We surrender our families before you, King of Kings. We surrender, Lord, even all the viewers who dear Lord. We surrender our families.
Kelly's King of Kings, that you may keep us safe and end us in your wings, that you may surround us with, uh, with mountains just as you surround Jerusalem, King of Kings. Take the stage, my Father. May you reign, my King. May you manifest and have your King of Kings. You want to us, Lord, that you know the desires of our heart, and we pray, Lord, that you may give us the grace, dear Lord, and the zeal to reach, uh, to, uh, the desire and the zeal alone to reach the, uh, the destiny that you have us for last King of Kings. We can't reach out of this, but you can. You alone are worthy. You alone are our King of Kings. That's why we invite you, Lord, in our midst, in our lives, Lord. Just as Moses testified that without thy presence, King of Kings, he is not going to move King of Glory. And even you admit and say, Father, without thy presence, we can't make it. Come, Lord, and let your presence reign in our lives. Come, O Lord, let your presence reign in our works. Come, Lord, let your presence reign, dear Jehovah, Lord, in, in, in our families. Come, Lord, let your presence reign in our transport system, O oh Lord, for the honor and glory of thy name. For you have always meant the good and the best for us that shall die. Take the stench, Father, and reign, my King. Be with us, lead us, guide us, Father. Our country, Lord, the leaders be with them, my Father. Our, the, our fellow brothers and sisters in essential services, see them through O Redeemer. Our brothers and sisters, Lord, in their various work, may you be with them, King. And even our schools take the stench, King of glory, and manifest. Give our leaders the wisdom to know the way forward of our country and our way, King of Kings. You are faithful, Lord. You are mighty, and you are incomparable, my King. And it is in Jesus Christ's name I pray, believing and giving thanks. Amen. Our Father, hallowed be the name, the kingdom come, that will be done on earth as this in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, thank you, praise and worship. I believe you at home have given a round of applause to the praise and worship, and I believe you also joined us in that wonderful praise and worship session. Now we're going to the announcements, um, who will be done by Kingori, Dance on Kingori. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome again to this service. We thank you so much for joining us from wherever you're joining us. And we are glad that you have been able to join us yet another Sunday. Uh, I'd like to remind you to continue following government directives. It's very important that we continue wearing our masks, washing our hands, and also maintaining social distance. Now, mask has a value in Usu. Mask in a value Unava inafunika mapua, mdomo, nado kipata ya macho, utakuwa sawa. Uh, we'd like also to thank you. And we also like to hear from you how this service has been, where you have been watching us from. And we also like to see your comments about this service and to know if it's helping you from wherever you are. Uh, from the church, we'd like to, there's a wedding announcement and I'll read it as it is. We would like to announce that Samson Kabogo, a member of PCA Karubang South Church, would like to marry Lucy Washeke of AIPCA Nilimani Juja. If there's no objection raised, the two will be married under the Christian Act on 1st August 2020 at 10.30 a.m. at PCA Tindigua Church. May the Lord bless the two who are looking forward to exchange their matrimonial vows. You was in Christ's service, Reverend George K. Wamani. This was the last announcement, the third and the last announcement. So join them virtually on that day. We also like, in the spirit of weddings, we also like to thank you for joining Tatua and Maggie uh, the other Saturday during their special day. And we like, it was very colorful and we like to thank you also for just being part of it. Also, like to remind you about the Zoom fellowship, which has been ongoing, uh, and we have been doing an interesting book, Sacred Search, and try try find time and join that join us, so that we continue we can continue to be blessed together. Even for these services, we have been doing an amazing series on Bible reading, and also on prayer. 
And even today, we are going to continue with the same as Kevin is going to preach to us. We thank you so much for joining us. Continue joining us and continue in prayer. Continue. Do not, do not lose hope during these times. Continue waiting upon the Lord. The Lord is surely going to come through for us in a mighty way. Mbarikiwe sana na mkwena wikipua. Thank you. Thank you so much, King Ori. Um, blessed announcements. And for his weddings, guys, Nyumbani, hey, 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 to Ziombe, eh? Youths, nonakana tunabarikiwa. Tunabarikiwa sana. And now it's time for uh, the reading and the preaching. I'd like to welcome all of you now to this wonderful time um, to participate in this teaching. I pray that you all have a book, a pen, and a Bible. Yeah? Yes, yeah, so... Stay tuned and let us have our reading. Thank you. Hello, my name is Masi Wangare. I'll be reading the Bible today. Our reading comes from Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 8. And it says, and when you pray, you must, be like the, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogue at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray, in your, and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who is in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up your empty phrases as the, as the Gentiles do. They think that they will be heard for, they, for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. That's the word of God. Okay. Wana Sifiwe. Yeah, it's a blessing to join, join together again in this service. Uh, as Danson has told us, we would like to hear from you whether this uh, service is a blessing, what have you been learning? You know, make comments on our videos on YouTube and Facebook, or even you DM, you know, and let's, let's hear what the Lord has been doing in your life uh, in this season. So we've been learning on Bible reading and prayer. You know, these are the basics, eh? That even uh, as we grow, uh, we must always go back to these basics. Uh, as, as Christians, even as we mature in, the, in faith, uh, what shows our maturity is in how we're engaging with the Word and our engagement with prayer. So today, last week we did on the why of prayer. So today we are doing the how of prayer. You know, just trying to meditate on how, how do we pray and how can we, you know, the, uh, the, the leading verse was from Luke chapter 11, verse 1, eh? and, and that day Jesus had come from praying and the, I think the disciples had seen that this guy has a, has, has a way he prays that I, that I would desire to, to have and therefore they were, they were, they were going to Jesus asking him, would you teach us to pray? And after that, that's when he taught them the, the, the prayer that we always do, and like we did today, our Father who is, who is at in heaven. And uh, because Jesus had a, had, had a way, even in his very busy, you know, life of ministry, his, you know, even him being God, eh, he had time that, 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 that he had set apart so that he can, he can be in prayer. And I'm going to focus on four things. Uh, I'll be brief on the four things uh, that we meditate on uh, regarding prayer. And the first thing I want to talk about is make time to pray. You know, as we think about how, the first thing is that you have to make time to pray. You know, some prayers are spontaneous, not necessarily that you, you scheduled. 
but others we have to schedule time. We can't leave our prayers to chance. At wakati tu nitapata time, nitaomba. You know, because most of the time it ends up being postponed. I'll pray tomorrow. I'm very busy today. You know, nitaomba kesho. You know, and, and maybe things are working out. So maybe there is no urgency of praying at that point. And therefore, when we don't plan on how to pray, we will most probably not pray. Though there are other times that are not necessarily planned, uh, but we find ourselves going to God in prayer. You know, we can't be busy enough to say we don't have time to pray. We, we can't say we have a lot that we are doing that we even don't have time to pray. And the example we have is Jesus Christ. And I was saying at Luke chapter 5, you know, Jesus was very busy. He had just called his disciples, and it was in the beginning of his ministry, and he had cleansed a, a leper. And then, in Luke chapter 5, uh, uh, can I start from verse 14? Uh, after he had, he had cleansed this leper, verse 14 says, And he charged him, tell no one, uh, but go show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing, as Moses commanded, for proof to them. But now, even more, the report about him went abroad, and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities. You know, this was a great opportunity for Christ to do ministry, because so many guys have known about his, his mission, they are coming to be healed. But look at what verse 16 says, but he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. That even amid such a busy time, that Christ found time to go into a desolate place and pray. You know, we have very many important tasks, very important, and very important indeed, but these things are second best when we compare them to our private communion with our Savior. You know, they should be second, and our priority is communing with our Savior. No matter how busy we are, that should be primary. You know, this, they are important, yes, but they, in order of priority, our communion with our Savior is the beginning. And we must daily, daily pursue to have communion with our Lord. You know, Martin Luther, we, we know of, of, of a famous response he had when he was asked about his schedule. Because Martin Luther was very busy uh, during the times of Reformation. And, and he was very busy. I can imagine how he was because he was a leader. But he said this when he was asked about his schedule. And he said, I have so much to do that I will spend the first three hours in prayer. You know, think about it. That I have, so, you know me, sometimes I'll say, <laughs> you know, I postpone it because I have so much to do. But he's saying, <laughs> that I have first of all to spend three hours praying uh, because these things that I'm doing, they, I need God to be with me. I need him to walk with me. You know, I love, I love the response he had when one of his, the, the one who, who used to shave him, alikuwa naitua Peter, alimuliza, teach me how to pray. And he, he has written a, a prayer, which we can get, you can get that book online, called A Simple, uh, so, sorry, uh, A Simple Prayer. So it, it, it talks about, and he says, in, regarding our priority on praying, he said, guard yourself carefully against those false, deluding ideas which tell you, wait a little while. I'll pray in an hour. First I must attend to this or that. Such thought gets you, gets you away from your prayer into other affairs, which so hold your attention and involve you that come, nothing comes out of of prayer for that day. We must be careful not to break the habit of true prayer and imagine other works to be necessary, which after all, are nothing of the kind. You know, I could see myself, times that I had a prompting in my heart to spend time with God, and maybe there are other things that I thought to be of more priority, you know, to be of more importance, and neglected the place of prayer. And Jesus was very uh, you know, we can see Jesus spending many hours at night. You know, we could say in the morning that when he was coming out of prayer, you know. And 
is because he had prioritized the place of prayer. And therefore, it's important that we plan and schedule times of prayer because they are important. The second thing I want to say is pray through the word. You know, we are learning about Bible reading, and you can't separate those two things. We are able to pray because first we have read God's word. You know, we have read God's word, and we have known who God is, and therefore we, have, we are able to pray to him. You know, you can't pray like an unbeliever. When he prays, he prays without understanding because he has not been reading God's word. So he praying, he's praying to a God that he doesn't understand. But us as believers, when we pray, we must read this word that helps us to pray. Because when we read his word, it tells me I've been walking in sin and that in him there is forgiveness. And therefore, I'm able to pray for forgiveness. You know, it tells me how God loves me. And in my prayer, I'm able to submit myself under his love. You know, it tells me that he cares for me. You know, even in such a season, you know, we are able to know when we read God's word about his sovereignty and how much he's able to care for us even in such times, that nothing is too hard for him. And we're able to do that when we, read, when we pray through reading his word. And just as a child learned to speak by hearing their parents' voice, so we learn to pray by listening to our Father. The more his word rests in our hearts, the more readily we speak them back to him. You know, we'll not have prayers that are frustrated. We'll have prayers that are hopeful because we are praying through his word. We have been meditating on the truths and the promises in his word. And therefore, as we pray, we have memorized scripture. And we, as, we, as we pray, we are meditating on those scriptures and knowing that this is what God says about my needs. This is what God says about my sins that he has forgiven me. And therefore, we are walking knowing what God is saying. And therefore, those two things must work together. We must pray through the word. The third thing is, focus on God who hears you. You know, sometimes our prayer becomes mechanical. Because, nikiamuka, mwambia God asanti, kwa sababu ya siku, siku nyongwa, ama tuku patwa na wezi, ama, you know, vituka hizo. So, zina kuwa mechanical, jiwa venya si usema. Unachokwanza prayer za, za intercessory. Hile maombi mrefu ya PCA, kuna vile si uomba, alafu saa tunafika pali, tunanza president, tunaenda vice president, tunaenda hivyo mpaka MCA, alafu tunanzia moderator, <laughs> mpaka deacon. And sometimes it can become mechanical, and our prayer can become that we are more focused on the activity, you know, the words we are using, we are more focused on the activity of prayer, and we are not thinking about the one we are praying to. You know, I'm not necessarily meditating on that I, when I say our Father who art in heaven, that actually this is my Father who is actually in heaven. That is, that, that as I say, hello be your name, I'm not saying it mechanically and not focusing on him in that prayer. And it's important because we, prayer becomes a burden when it becomes mechanical. But you know, when I enjoy the fellowship of praying to him, when I enjoy being in his presence and knowing that I'm communicating to my Savior, you know, you're able to enjoy and to look forward to fellowshipping with him. It becomes a burden when it becomes mechanical. You know, as a, as a married man, when, when, when your communication with your spouse becomes mechanical, you don't look forward to it. Because you look forward to kulizu wa maswari, na utaki kujibu, na maybe ulifanya kitu ulikosea, you know? So you don't want to be accountable. And therefore, that kind of communication, you don't look forward to it. But when you are, you, you are enjoying an intimate fellowship, you know, when you are, you are enjoying being married to this person, you look forward to communicating with them. You know, you look forward to pouring your heart and saying, I am sorry, because you, you, your relationship is intimate. And therefore, when we enjoy our relationship with our Father, and when we, 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 we make prayer our communing with our Savior, you know, it, it, there is power that comes of, out of it. There is refreshing. And, and there is, uh, we, we are able to look forward to praying to Him, and it no longer becomes a burden. You know, even as we pray in church, 
even as we pray for the government and we pray for our journeys and all those things, as we pray for those in hospitals, we are not praying with our mind not in it, but we are praying knowing that the Lord is able to actually heal them. As we pray for our families, that they may know the Lord, we are praying actually knowing that the Lord is able to save them. Not disconnected from who the Lord is. And therefore we should focus on God who hears our prayers. Not on the theme of our prayer, not on how we are praying, but, but our communication, focusing on the communication that we have with our Savior. And the last thing I want to say is that we need to pray when alone, and we also need to pray when gathered. Our church today is slowly neglecting the place of prayers when we are gathered, especially prayers when we come together and intercede. You know, prayers when we, we, we come together and pray for the issues, for the mission, for, you know, when we, we come just and intercede together. We more emphasize of prayer, prayer alone, but most of the time, we only have those necessary prayers. But we don't necessarily have times set apart that we are seeking the Lord earnestly together. And it's important that we make priority to praying, even though as we are, we are encouraging each other to pray when you are alone, we also want to encourage each other to pray when you are gathered. In Acts chapter 1, verse 14, you know, it says, all this with one accord. Uh, and when they had entered, uh, verse 13, and when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter, John, and James, you know, these are the disciples, uh, all the disciples and verse 13, all these were in one accord, were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. And we see, especially in the book of Acts, we see where believers are gathered together. You know, like when uh, Peter was in prison, the believers were gathered together, praying, you know, together as, 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 as one. And it's important that we also encourage where we meet, uh, meet together and pray. So as a youth, as friends, I don't know whether the last time you sat together with your friends and, 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 and prayed together, you know, and believed, because there is breakthrough that happens when, when people gather together in, in agreement that, oh God, we submit ourselves to you for a certain agenda, for a certain issue, there is breakthrough that God brings when men of God gather together in agreement. And I encourage us uh, that we, we bring back this desire of prayer. I remember in my growing up, we used to go to Kamboi and we used to spend every month a whole night of prayer. Yes, let's have all these other things. Let's have concerts. Let's have all these other things, but let's not forget praying, you know? Let's not forget that we also need to have cashiers of praying because there is breakthrough that happens when guys come together and pray, you know? The world is very, the world is working so hard to, to, to go to the evil, you know? The world is working so hard and it's aggressive to do the evil things and we must also be very aggressive to do the things of God. You know, we must be very aggressive to do what is right. We must be very aggressive to seek God. And therefore, we can't just seek God when it's convenient, but we must make time to pray to Him. And He's just communing with Him. Whether you are walking, you are sleeping, you are, you know, there's no formula. It's just communing with Him. The times you feel prompted to, to maybe to jump as you are celebrating, the times you will feel prompted to sleep some on the floor because you are humbled by God's faithfulness or by your sin and you are surrendering to him. He, he's, he leads us in our times of prayer. And therefore, I pray that the Lord will encourage you that your prayer life will be different. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you. What a beauty it was that when you died on the cross, the curtain was torn and you were all given access to come to you, that we can pray to you. We don't have to go through anyone so that you can hear us. 
what a privilege that father when we are in pain when we are joyful we can come to you and seek you and have you lord help our hearts to commune with you the devil is working so hard to distract us to keep us away because he knows that the more we commune with you the more faithful we'll be the more you know the more our relationship will grow with you and our father we pray that lord will be given to prayer oh god help us help us as young people not to just walk uh without caring how we we do things without caring about our spiritual life and be busy with the things of the world uh, but i pray that we have priority you know we'll say like martin luther that we are so busy that we have to spend more time in prayer we have so much to do that we have to spend more time in prayer we thank you for giving us a privilege to come to you lord it is such a privilege and we praise you in jesus name we pray amen amen Thank you. Thank you so much. That was a very, very powerful preaching. I believe that all of you have been stirred up in your spirit to praise and to worship the Lord. And now as we come to the end of the service, I'd like to welcome you again to next uh, Sunday for our Sunday service. And I pray that also you'll join us as a youth every Tuesday from 8 to 9.30 or to 9 or to whatever time we'll have our fellowship we pray that you'll join us and have a blessed time. Have a blessed week. Take care and stay safe. Thank you. Let us end with the grace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>